You must have things on your mind, huh? You're usually badgering me about something. Yes, I have a mind stuff. Loads of mind stuff. Going on as we speak, or as we don't speak. I'm very opaque and mysterious, you see. Stop that mumbling. There's a sound. Hushed voices and careful footfalls approach down the overgrown path. The Bisto's ears, even these muffled noises, are perfectly loud. Come forward, strangers. If you're friendly, come forward slowly. Silence. Perhaps a minute of it is all the answer that emerges from a thick wall of brush. Then... Why, are you someone important? Bushmaster? You look like experienced rogues. No, that's how it says. I combined the top line and the bottom line. You look like experienced whatever you are. Bandits or rogues. Not hounding for captives, I hope. Hey, that guy's got a bow, so he's not exactly like me. Yeah, he's cooler. Ooh, wow, dude. <laughs> well, that's exactly my response. Oh, move it, you fool. How are you so miserable at this? Sorry, mistress. Here, take my arm. A pair of travelers clamors free of the bracken. Their clothing fine, but a tad filthy. Hello, strangers. I'm Ovalok, servant and apprentice to this prestigious and lovely woman who... Well, perhaps we shouldn't use your real name. Oh my God! That's Seema Masterson. Hmm? Oops, he knows your name. And why wouldn't he? <laughs> Seema the Dream Chanter, poet and peerless singer, impossible to turn away an ear when she's plucking strings, spinning yarns, deploying her famous vowels. Well, you don't seem like a threat. Come sit by the fire. We're not in any kind of bad business. Dreadstorm. Mistress? Oh, the fire sounds grand. The small camp settles a little awkwardly. Introductions go round. Shortly thereafter, Datman Lu can't help himself. He spins Seema's ear. Makes me want to shake them all, honestly. The younger folks just don't appreciate artistry. Don't know the names of our treasured poets and performers. I was there when you sang Star Sailors in Dovetown. Flawless. You recited Tree of Looms in full, pageless, without rest. People still talk about it. Do they? Yes, yes. I remember those days. I try not to miss them. Oh, mistress, you don't need to say it. Are we going to, like, fight these people or what? <laughs> I do, though. Just that. Nothing lasts forever. Bad fever took my lofty registers from me. My volume. Performance is such a physical thing. Most forget that I'm weak. Nowadays, I lean on him, my student, Ovlock there. <laughs> you sound like a grandma. <laughs> <laughs> I am imagining her as being older than she appears. That is true. She does have white hair. And she did say that she, uh, like, performing was harder. Maybe, like, it hurt her voice. I would love to show that gift to you again, but it's gone now. Only the memory remains. Why not try a small song? Even if it's quiet, I'm not singing. Even if it's just a shadow of you, we'd like it. It's a good night. I think I may have a few verses in me. First, she moves her fingers over the strings and the mandalute. Great rings of sound, chords and twining. The melody hangs and wobbles and winds around the ear. It curls in the heart like an old dog returning. My father wrote this song for me. It was my first song. Next, she begins to sing. Uh, I don't want to sing, though. Boom! This is the song, people. This right here. <laughs> we shall continue. No, Nobody needs to hear this. Her voice is as sheer as gauze. It yields to the slight sigh of a breeze, but it persists. Trembling song. It's beautiful. Suddenly, an unpleasant brick closes her mouth. She swallows, appears to be fighting a cough. Unshed tears at our star bright in the firelight. Are you? Mistress. But she shakes her head. Her fingers repair the halted tune. That's a... That's a... That was my father's lullaby. Wow, I... My life, I know, has been blessed. The night before... The fight and mood Mata Shrine passes quietly. What the heck? Fire uh, spirit. 
bro. There's a fire spirit. I don't see any in these cards. He's no, he's friend. with he's with us. Is that my oh. little buddy? Who knows? Yes, it could be. Is he going on his own? Yeah, he's doing his own thing. I can't control him. Fuck you, Bryce. That's my corner. Oh, you fucker. I took cover. Where's he going, Louise? No idea. I can't control him. Hang Louis is so strong. Hey guy, can you like not come near me? Blocked. Uh, Dang, Louise, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bro. Got that big boy damage. Hmm, fuck that raccoon, dude. Where you at, Bryce? What are you doing? I got blocked by the frog. I need a better bow, dude. Damage. Everybody's getting on this cool gear. Seven damage. Nothing. Look at that. <laughs> right? Yeah, there was like a massive power scaling with that. Oh, no, no, no. It's not my pet. Look, my pet's at my feet. You see him? Oh, yeah, he is. Oh, yeah. Who, who has a fire spirit? What was that? Maybe it's know. just like something in the in this area. Oh, he bailed. Maybe we had to like protect it. Oh, I mean, we kind of did. Hey, there you go, Bryce. Look, hunter armor, Bryce. There you go. Salvage. Thank Got it. God. No, give it to me. Look, this place cannot be threatening. Look at it. It's so naturous. Block. Loosh. Loosh. Ancient conifers stand at the middle of the brewer garden where the ground rises great sequoias sequoias shoulder up the towering redwood thick grown cedars mob their knees the moon passes more loudly than this giant tracking it blindly think it'll lead us to the godlands wait it's a giant we're fighting a giant it looked like it it looked like a tr trend oh the trees like are they ants maybe kind of they spotted it that morning, a myth among the wild populace. Its appearance has captured the minds of Dat Van Lu and the others. Who does he think he is anyway, strolling here and there? Does he even does he own the world? The woods? Heard the locals call him Lord Evergreen. Just like Eddie. They move into the flowing fog. And now everyone knows. Shut up. The earth holds its breath. Dampness heavier heavies their eyelids darkens their hair smears of silver shine on trunks roots and stones they stumble and feel a path over rocks and wrecks chasing the giant through its noise barren world this will be completely opaque in a second oh I think it's stopped it has stopped think he's aware of us now it turns about someone somehow finding space high and mostly hidden in the haze its face must hang above them with bending bark sounds creaky hip folding legs it gently lowered it lowers itself fitting its bulk to a tract of treeless ground an unspoken question and it wants an answer they're caught in its eyeless gaze and a silence that grows and twists grotesquely long. It could crush them. That fact is certain as the soil. Stomachs harden. Innards clench. 
muscles coil. Or let Bryce pick, and then Louis picks the next one. Got it. I kind of agree with Bryce. Democracy. <laughs> <laughs> Dreadstorm feels the danger and hopes to talk them past it. My breath is short in this fog. Suddenly, uh, well, can you listen? You made a mistake, I guess. Sort of just wanted to know what was going on with you, and you maybe aren't interested in sharing. That's fine. We'll turn and go. Yeah, yeah. The giant's massive head holds impossibly still. Then its creaking limbs lofts it up once more into the sky. It sets out again on its interminable invisible track. Now we're stuck leaving, aren't we? I don't know. All we got was a long mute stare. Anyway, we're bound to uh, Dreadstorm's word. Let's go. They find their way easily in the unfogged wood. Forest life wakes around them. Crows make casual comments. The roots, still slippery and damp, sometimes send their feet askance. A sconce. Brave of you, love. Speaking for us. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Still got those wretched wild things to chase off. Right. Yep. That's right. You get him, Luis. <laughs> oh. Ooh, oh, what's the bear? Rude ass pig. Ooh, hey, oh, we look at that. Maybe I should have saved that for the big bear. I should interrupt him again. He attacks twice? Uh, you want me to flash Coney, Luis? No. I think you take him. Okay. That was easy. I ain't scared, Bryce. <laughs> was raccoon's coming. Still. No, Bryce, I'm scared. I'm out. You're out. Don't worry, Luis. I'll handle him. <laughs> <laughs> what, Bryce? I don't know what happened. Did you get him, Eddie? I killed him, yeah. <laughs> it's kill stealing, dude. It's impressive how quickly I can go from fighting for my life back to everything feeling normal. Normal is always waiting in the wings. When we welcome it, it is back up to us. Uh, it's me. At least our little friend is back to normal. When was he not normal? Did he like transform? I didn't say anything. No idea. Why does it do that anyway? What? That digging. There's something nice about digging. Backbreaking work, but very spiritually satisfying. Later that afternoon. <laughs> Did you check your coin again? It looks like it. About time it wore itself. Oh, look, it's got something. If it's one of those tentacles, send it back. Ah, I hardly ever get those anymore. This is, uh, something else. A coin? Not any type of coin I recognize, though. It looks old. This is a bit of a theme with you, isn't it? <coughs> Who knows where it came from? Better than another dead mouse, anyway. Good attitude. 